to our story. So anyway, I was doing really well with the maths. And that's when, you know, after a while she said, Diane, I want to put you in for a test. The dyslexic, what was it? Sorry. Yeah, so we had to do a proper assessment with a dyslexic specialist. And I think it was like four hours long. Mm. They tested you on everything. Yeah. They asked you questions about your vocabulary. Yeah. They got you to write a letter. They got, they tested you on loads of things. There was even some puzzles. Yeah, well, I enjoyed the puzzles. Yeah. yeah. And that was the IQ bit. Yeah. And then at the end of that, it took, I think it was a month to get the report back. Yeah. Still hurt me. Doesn't matter. Can you push yeah. your foot, push it down a bit? Keep it down like that. Yeah. Yeah. So basically we did all the assessment and it came back that we were both dyslexic. Yeah. And mum finally realised now that she's just like me. <laughs> a dyslexic. <laughs> yeah. Because I knew what dyslexia was from Azara. You, know, you just didn't know you had it. I didn't know I had it. I knew there was something wrong. I thought it was because I missed so much school because... Yeah, when my mum was younger, she was a severe asthmatic. Yeah, so I was in and out of hospitals a lot, so I missed out a lot. On your education. On education. So they thought maybe it could have been for that. Yeah, that you just missed it and that you were just trying to catch up. Yeah, but it, it wasn't. It, was, it did turn out dyslexic. So I was quite relieved, actually, when I found out I was dyslexic. Because it's like, oh, there's the missing piece. Yeah, and the benefits of being dyslexic and being diagnosed by a college is they give you extra time in your exams. Yeah. And sometimes you get a scribe, someone that writes down your things. So you can tell scribe, them, let's say you're doing an essay for your English, you can tell them what you would want to write. And then they so write it. you do all the studying, you take all the knowledge in. And then you tell this other person. And then you tell this person to sit next to you in an exam. Like a story. So you have to literally say, I went to the shop yeah, no, and then the, I did the, this. The, in the exam, they'll say to you... Um, what do you want to say? They'll give you a question for your exam or even five or six questions. And then what you do is you write down, you say what the question is and the, describe the person next to you. She'll read the question out to you. And you'll tell and you'll her your her response. Answer. Yeah. And as you're giving her the answer, she's writing it down for you. So, to me, that was like, wow. It was a relief. Yeah, it was like a breath of fresh air. It was like, oh, because all this thing I took in, I knew I couldn't put it out. You know, take or it like out me, it. you you dumb things down because you can't spell them. Yeah. Whereas when you have someone that's writing it, your thoughts yeah. are then put as you you actually think them. Yeah. And. So, mum was passing at Some this point. Course. We were passing, we were passing. I actually was passing exams and I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a relief because yeah. you were studying, putting yeah. all the hard work in. Yeah. And then you'd pass. Yeah. Now, when we were halfway through our access, my brother decided that he now wanted to do an access. But he's not like us, so he's not dyslexic. <laughs> no, he's not dyslexic <laughs> he's, at all. No, he, he just gets it. <laughs> Neither is my other son. Yeah, both mums, my older brother and my younger brother, both normal, no dyslexia. So my younger brother, which is Carlos, who we're talking about, he got on to the access at City College in Coventry, yeah. which was a different one to us. It was in the town centre. Yeah, he, he liked that one. Yeah. And all the people that he'd done like different courses with and his friends, he knew they were all going to that one. Yeah, so, so it was better for him. Yeah. So when you're doing an access, halfway into doing the access, you start applying for the unis and the courses that you want to do. Oh. Yeah. And which system was that on again? I can't even remember. Um, UCAS, is it? Yeah, well done, Mum, UCAS. Yeah. So halfway through, you pay to do an application. At the time when we did it, it was £36. Yeah. And you'd pick five universities that you wanted to do in five courses. Yeah. So for me and mum, it was Coventry Nursing. It was Birmingham Nursing. It was Oxford Books Nursing. Oh, yeah. And it was De Montford, which is in Leicester, yeah. doing nursing. And what they told is you write a big, massive letter saying why you want to be on that course and what skills you'd bring to that course. Yeah. What, what's the name of that letter? It's a personal statement. Yeah, that's it. So you, you write it and you explain why you want to do it, what you could bring to it, how it'd improve your life and why you, you want to study that subject. Yeah. 
So we did that, and then near the end of the course, you start to get replies back. And what those replies are, are conditional offers. Yeah. And the conditions are that you go to the uni itself, you have an interview at each and every one of those uni with two or three people, and they ask you questions about different scenarios to do with nursing, what you do in this situation, what would you do in that situation. See, I passed them flying colours. And then remember the circle one you had to do? This is at Coventry. That was at Coventry, in, yeah. You had to sit down in a circle. They used to put you into certain groups. You sit down. And you yeah. discuss a topic. They'd throw you a topic and you sort of discuss it. And it... it could vary. So it could be like, for an example, for one what we've had recently, was what would you do if you went into an older person's house on one of your placements and you find that he has dementia and his family have locked him in a room? And then you'd have to discuss that in a group saying what you would do. And when, when you were doing like the circle group, you have to, the best thing, how I can describe it, is you would talk about your scenario and how you felt about it and, you know, what you would do in the situation. But even though you're saying what you would do in the situation, you would bring in the group in with you. Yeah, because basically you'd learn that you don't want to be the, the too overpowering person. Yeah. You want to be someone that has compassion and that brings everybody into that discussion. Yeah, and you also discuss it with them. Yeah. And bounce your idea off theirs and their no, idea yeah. off yours. So basically you're not, I know everything, you know, I know it all. Yeah. You're, what do you think of this? Would you do that? Yeah. Oh, that's a really great idea. Yeah, yeah. I would do this. Yeah, so we did that. I passed that perfect. So did I. And then you had your maths and English exams at the end of it. English passed And IT. It. English passed it, IT passed it, maths didn't pass it. Yeah. It was two points off. But you did get an offer for De Montford, but once we did the train ride, we realised that was going to be too hard because we would still have to work at the same time. Yeah. So we'd have our caring job and we would have our uni placements. Yeah, because we still had to financially support, support us out. Yeah. And sort us out, out, rent, all the other things you have to pay. Then after that... So we both got into De Montford and Coventry University didn't because of the maths. Yeah. And I got into Coventry, but I wanted to defer so that mum would have another chance of doing the test. I held it again. And then... That's every single thing. You were two marks off, they said. Two marks off again. For the second time after doing the test, I was two marks off. And then I got my offer and I was like, can I defer? till January because they do two intakes they do one in September and one in January and I thought if I defer until January mum can do her test again yeah and they refused me they said no that's not a good enough reason but I wanted to do it with my mum yeah you did basically because of my own insecurities my anxiety I wanted mum there as well even though I tried pushing her oh no you did everything in the train it wouldn't work not no. with me I'm very very stubborn yeah so so I was like, okay, I'm not taking it then. And in the meantime of this all happening, our, your dad, my granddad, had cancer and he was terminal. Yeah. So we were looking after him. Yeah. But unfortunately he died. And we were like, hmm. Because we'd nursed him till the very end. Yeah. We were like, is this something that we want right now? Because we were very, very hurt and depressed about that. Yeah. And we were like, no, nah, I think we should take a step back. Yeah. And we did. And we waited for Carlos to finish his course. Yeah. And then and Carlos he, finished his he in June. the access to higher education. After us. Yeah. And we all passed. And then we sat down and we thought, okay, let's, let's change what we want to do right now. And we'll do something else. So we don't lose our qualifications. Yeah. We sat down and we thought, we'll pick something else to do. So what we did was actually good we looked at all the courses and you went online and each of us picked out 10 courses yeah what we'd want to do at university and we put them in my granddad's hat yeah my dad's hat <laughs> and we folded them all up into little squares yeah and we put them all into a hat and we shook it around i pulled out criminology how many did you take was it five um or three, three. i think it was three and i took out three and carlos took out three 
And mine it's was shocking. like... Lucky Dick we said it was. Yeah, mine was criminology, psychology and nursing. Oh, and I was, I was like, I ain't doing nursing. You had criminology and psychology too. And I can't remember what you... No, biomedical science was yours. Oh, yeah. But biomedical science wasn't something you wanted to do. No. What did Carl say? He had teaching. Yeah. Psychology. Yeah. And I can't remember what his third one was. So, me and mum said she wanted to do psychology. Yeah. And I was like, mm, I'm not too sure I want to do psychology. I think I want to do criminology. Yeah. But I still wanted to do it with mum. Yeah. So we had a look and we seen that they did a combined course, which was criminology and psychology, so we could do it together. Yeah. So we decided to apply for that. And Carlos, he said, I'm not keen on the criminology side of it. Yeah. He said, I will do the psychology, psychology on its own. And we said, okay then, this is fantastic. So we'd all be there to support each other. Yeah. So we all went down. We all applied online, didn't yep. we? Put on our personal statements. And we got into our place. We got a com we got yeah. We basically got our offer to do it at Coventry. Yeah. We all did. Whole three of us. So we decided that was it, we were gonna go over to Coventry. Mum felt like she was gonna be the oldest student there. Luckily yeah. you weren't. No, because there was a man Did that was older. She felt like, oh you know, I think I'm too old to go to university. I think you know, it's only for young people. Don't get me wrong, I was really fascinated in the course, really wanted to get into it, and I wanted to do that. You know, and I wanted to learn more, I wanted to learn more about the mind. Everything. And this course, yeah, it. Basically, for a freshers' week, which is the very first week that you join university, they, uh, they do this event for mature students because the majority of students are 17, 18, 19. Yeah. They do an event where all the mature students can meet each other. But I don't think you were very well. Do I don't think they publicise it enough. Oh, right. Yeah. I, really, I don't think they publicise the mature students enough. Because my journey was like, oh, I don't know if I should go. Yeah. But really, deep down in me saying, I'm going. You wanted to do it. Yeah. That overrided. The... And I've always wanted a degree. Yeah. Right. I think it was something to prove to ourselves that we yeah, could do it. Could do it. And then when you're dyslexic, you think, oh, I don't know if I can. Yeah. And then I thought, do you know what? If I can pass that access to higher education, you can do anything. I can do this. And yeah. you did. So, and I thought, it doesn't matter how old I am, I'm going. And they're doing like the mature students, and I didn't. It was like a meet up, wasn't it? So, yeah. Uh, the mature students. It was like was a Ill. barbecue, but Mum was ill, so I went. Yeah, you to kind of get the feel of it. I went with Carlos. Yeah. And it wasn't that many mature, mature students, but some of the ones that we'd met on the course were there. Yeah. But it was more good than anything. So we... You enjoyed it that day? Because I remember you coming yeah. back saying it was really nice. We enjoyed the food. Yeah, we, the talk. It was on the roof, yeah. rooftop. Yeah. But yeah, so it was, it was okay. Basically, the following week, we got... A, a timetable with all our classes and luckily thank the lord me and mum were in everything the same yeah. except for one there was one class that you had different times to meet do you remember oh it was criminology class yeah it? so Who basically was our lecturer tony is it anthony colombo yeah that's it he was fantastic yeah so it was really good basically we'd only have one class out that whole week hmm. where we weren't together yeah. And that made it easier because we had a friend. We had each other. Yeah. You know, we could both take notes. Someone didn't get it. The other one would. And then every now and again, we'd have Carlos in our class. So that was really cool too. Making sure Carl ain't coming. Yeah. So basically, we did the degree for the three years. First year, how would you explain the first year? First year is finding your feet. Yeah, I think the first three to four months is finding your feet, getting to know other people, getting to know other lecturers, you know, finding where your classroom is, your lecture halls are, and then actually finding you're not the only mature student on there. Yeah. And then you actually see there's loads of mature students, you're like, what? Yeah. There was, there was a bit more than you would have thought, yeah. which was really good. And you were like, oh, so I'd get talking to the more mature students, which was quite nice. Yeah. But also mixing with the younger students, you know, the ones who were missing home. and Yeah, that was good because you were able to be like a mum to yeah. other students that didn't have their mum there. Because a lot of them live in halls, whereas yeah. we stayed at home. 
And then some of them would ask us about how we're finding the course. You know, ask you how you're finding the course. Yeah. And your side as well. Yeah, so basically I would say the first year for me was quite intense. Mum found the first year quite easy, whereas I found it quite intense. You did, didn't you? But I don't know why I struggled with the first year so much, whereas Mum and Carlos loved it. And as Zara always said, that if I wasn't there with her... Oh, I wouldn't have done it. She'd have come out, she'd have left you. Oh, I didn't, I'd have never done it. I know me, my anxiety would have got the better of me. Yeah. I couldn't go into a lecture if I was late. I would literally yeah. wait outside. I couldn't do it. I yeah. physically couldn't get myself through that door. Whereas mum was the opposite. She'd just go, there'd be, I, there were I no worries. I would just think, well, if I'm late, I'm late. It hasn't been my fault. It could, anything could ever happen. Yeah, for There's me it's... Word, sorry. Yeah, for me and it's not that easy. In, I'd just walk in and say, sorry about being late and walk straight in. Yeah. Yeah, so the second year was a lot better. You get into the swing of it, you know what you're doing, you know how to do your exams you know how to reference yeah because they learn you so much more second year i found it okay yeah yeah i, th I think i enjoyed it more the second the year. last year was your hardest whereas yeah. i loved the last year second year why. i enjoyed it i enjoyed doing my dissertation uh, dissertation i think you found it a lot more challenging because it was a lot more exams whereas yeah. i'm very good at exams the exams were they were challenging they were very hard um and then you I have your dissertation. About two or three, didn't I? Yeah, because you had to redo them in the summer. I had to redo them in the summer. And I passed them. Yeah. But literally by the skin of a teeth. And that's how we yeah, ended up getting our yeah. degree. Then um, the third year, I uh, didn't enjoy it at all. No, you didn't enjoy the third year. No. I did. Do you know what I think it, the third year was for me? Too many exams. There was a lot of exams all crammed in. But we got through them. We did it. And the dissertation on top. Yeah, because you have, each year you have like six modules. So it's a lot more intense. Yeah. So the, we had the dissertation and in the meantime we still had our scribers. Yeah. People that would come near us. So it would take us a lot longer to get assignments done. We'd be in the library They gave us support with laptops. Yep. They gave us a reader pen. Yeah, reader pen. And yeah, so you'd highlight a text with it and it would read it for you and take it loud so you can headphones and listen to it. So when you did have your scribe with you, you could just sit and listen to it. And then they gave us Read Write Gold, which yep. I've never even heard of. Which is a software, but basically you highlight it on your computer and it reads it out for you. So I could I be writing something and then it can read it back to me so I can hear what it sounds like. Yeah, all these things I never even knew that existed. You know, when you don't know they exist. And yeah, then, you learn something, yeah. don't you? And then you actually see all these software and packages that have come out and help people that have got dyslexia. And there was Dragon, wasn't there? Yeah. It's called Dragon. You just Dragon. speak and then it writes it. Yeah, you speak. You wear your little headset and you just talk into it and then it uses what you say and writes it for you. Yeah, it writes it for you on the, the PC. Or... And then on top of that, we'd meet our dyslexic support worker. And yep. that would be for an hour a week. Yeah. So they would help us with going over our essays, making sure they sounded okay, making sure the spellings were all right. Yeah. Or we used to go into, which come to university, there used to be a little bit where they would help disabled students. Yeah, it was a dyslexic support centre. Yeah, dyslexic support centre, it's called. It's a lot and more quieter than the library. Yes. And, and you can got, talk. There's laptops in there. And they offer all these one-to-one -one supports. So you can book in a slot. You only get so many slots a week, though. Yeah. Just to make you aware. And there's a waiting list. Yeah, and you book in the slot. And that person sits beside you and goes to and say, what essay you've got coming up. Basically, they check over your work. Yeah, and they help you. They say, right, this is the plan. You know, because sometimes I'll get a bit of talk. Yes. And they say, right, John, here's a plan. Are you Let's following this? In. Yeah. So things stay structured. So with us, it would take a lot longer to do our assignments than it would a normal student because we're constantly having to go over our work, go over our work, go over yeah. our work. But we did it. <laughs>